Hello there everyone and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. TNO Lover, but Blessed is the Peacemaker. Thank you for your time, Secretary Jacobs. Chip stood from the resolute desk to greet Jane Jacobs as she entered the little office. There had been blab blah between them in the past, but it was important, given the circumstances, to try to turn over a new leaf in the relationship. Frankly, Chip Morrison needed every ally he could get. They shook hands in awkwardness, tinged with animosity hung between them. Once they had to regret the bad feelings between us during Philip's time in his office. Or this office, Chet began. I attempted to spell the cloud between them. I know I certainly rubbed you the wrong way at times. I'm sorry for that, but with everything going on, I don't think our feud is worth continuing, Truce. Jacob's blinks, slightly taken aback by Chet's opening. Some small, uncharitable part of her I never believed Chet was capable of a gesture like this, but she didn't mind being surprised. She nodded, her mind moving from the bad blood between them to the issue at hand. I appreciate that, Mr. Uh, Mr. President. With that being said, I believe the most important thing now is making sure that URI survives past his administration. A sad look crossed Jeff's face, quickly replaced by a mask of professionalism. I don't want the URI dying on me. That won't be the legacy of this administration, not as long as I can do anything about it. Jacobs has felt a brief flash of pride, perhaps some admiration, for Chep as he took on the whole threat of the failure of the project. Then she turned and left the Oval Office, leaving Chep alone once again. A fledgling arrest, Chep or a diffused rivalry. As, of course, continuing to do big talk and glass houses, so we should be able to do the better very soon. To get the cabinet in line, we gotta start by winning over most vocal opponents. We're not talking Kissinger, that kiss butt dude. Or butt kissing dude, or Lance Dale. We're talking about the mother of all Northern elites, Jane Jacobs. Has been no secret that we haven't always seen eye to eye. Jane is unfairly. Always thought of us as a huckster and a charlotte and a holdover from an early age of Southern Democratic politics. We, on the other hand, have always seen Jane as a kind of pencil neck brainiac who has no god darn idea how to get anything done in the country. <clears throat> Still, we do have one thing in common. We both love Philip. Let's see if we can work together this time to save his legacy. Soft skills. And so the department will push forward policy for public housing and municipal services, working alongside the states and cities, but with education and health get carved out. Bay pinched the bridge of his nose as he finished reviewing the section of the Urban Affairs Act outlining his new responsibilities to the Department of Housing and Urban Development. It may seem small now, but given the scale of the President's programs, it's a job that only get bigger. Jane Jacobs put the draft text aside with its side. Better get a dedicated cabinet member to watch that, that rather than to risk it falling through the cracks. All I can say is that I'm glad you have to you on our side. I don't think I've done the separation process as cleanly as you have, Bay said. The President's lucky to have you and see how far you've been looking at these issues under President Hart. It's had its up and down, Secretary Jacobs said, suddenly gross in the next text she just reviewed. Both under Hart and Morrison, I mean. Any tips for working with President Morrison, seeing as I'm new here? Mm -hmm. Secretary Jacobs found, uh, floundered in her new answer, something uncharacteristic of her, and enough to pique Bay's interest. Maybe they don't get along. Hmm. Well, we're trying to fix that right now, as you can definitely see. 44 billion, well, we're getting there. We're getting there before all, I'm just going to do temp tax cuts. But, <clears throat> and I'm never going to do uh, cut city spending. Because it's looking pretty green over here, which is awesome. The rumblings within the chamber. To be frank, saying Secretary Jacobs, uh, the news from the Senate is more dire for the URI than I think we'd anticipated. Birch Bay leaned forward, his voice dropping as if imparting some terrible secret. I've had senators showing me polls from Massachusetts, New York, Washington, it's all bad. The URI's popularity is down by double digits in some of the most liberal parts of the country, and senators don't go down on it, or don't go down with it. Let's unspoke between them, as both are well aware of how every conservative in the country had taken the opportunity of de Hart's death to launch every maximum attack on the URI. Do you think Morrison will be able to pork it through the presidency as one heck of a bully pulpit? Even as she asked. Jacobs knew the answer. Chep had been chosen for the vice presidency, Hart's handpicked successor. But whether he measured up to the requirements of the Oval Office remained an elephant in the room, size, question mark. I can't be sure, Bate replied. <clears throat> Rubbing his chin up and apologize. Trying to be optimistic. He's a man on a mission. Uh, trying his best out the country. I like to think that someone like that can always just a shot, but there are many other cynical than me. He can't rule by decree, but Congress won't listen to him, so he's in the slumbo. Bay continued, but Jacobs drifted away briefly, slightly haunted by the memory of the passion. <clears throat> Investment. Uh, glinting in the eyes of Morrison as he described his plans to fight for the URI. It hadn't been his idea, but he was now one of the staunchest defenders and seemed to have his whole heart in the fight. If the URI died, his blood would not be on Morrison's hands, or animosity for him. Further shrinking, Jane Jacobs decided to check on the president. Reconciliation or commiseration and commit tragedy? On the floor. Even if the VP wasn't required to be president in the Senate unless it required to cast a deciding vote, Birch Bay had made a point to be president as the Urban Affairs Act was introduced to the floor. Legislation here is how we honor the memory of President Harper carrying his legacy of urban renewal forward. Consider that every $10 used in your districts for fighting crime it could be replaced by a dollar funding house or access to basic necessities. An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. The oath we took to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution cannot be limited to preserving our past. It must be dedicated towards ensuring a brighter future. Bay himself couldn't speak, much to his own chagrin, as he would have happily led the charge on the floor himself he had he remained a senator. But that didn't mean he couldn't guide the RDC senators taking the floor on the talking points the administration wanted them to cover or the emotional highest hit. And judging from the reaction on the floor, there wouldn't be much to worry about. The greatest deliberative body on earth. 
without reward. People don't know this, the press like it when we talk about water skiing and fancy bars, but we pray every night. We get down on our knees and give a real old school Catholic prayer to the Lord on high. The Zazai doesn't like it, she's made comments about it before, but it's a habit that helps us get through the toughest of times. Lately all of our prayers have been about the Urban Renewal Initiative. We've been begging God, please let us save this, let us do this one good thing for poor Philip, let us give, give us the strength we need to be a good president, to preserve those things that you, that both of us worked hard for. We'll do whatever you ask, just let us get through this. Oh, shh, Nikes. Whoa. Uh. Um. Wow. Okay, so we're definitely going to fail. I might do some fucking stuff to see if it passes, but still, denial. Jin Jacobs from the Oval Office's door, handle door with a mind in place other than her 5,000th such visit. The moment it opened, they shared Zaza and Gabor shouting. Jacobs withdrew to a safe distance, trying to not eavesdrop. Gabor swept past her without a word, look, or presumably thought when Jacobs entered the President of the United States at his head in his hands. She could see a slight quiver, and his face was pale. He did not look up. Mr. President Chep, would you mind telling me what was that about? Oh, Miss Jacobs, Chep's eyes seemed to sparkle with tears as he blinked and they disappeared. Not the much of anything. Jacobs recognized the signs he needed her help and her business could wait. <clears throat> Are you all right, Chep? Surprise crossed Chep's face. He hadn't expected the question. Indecision, pain, and sadness wore in the president's eyes. I'd ask Zaza to talk less to the press. It doesn't bother me much, but her criticisms can really hurt the staff's morale. This discussion got off track. Jacobs let, out, let the lies pass. I've helped people through things like this. It's never easy talking about it, but I'm here to listen. It's a lot to bear alone. They, uh, thank you, Mr. Jacobs. I think I will. Better know available to be taken. Oh, shh, no, he's almost Oh, God. Yeah, get rid of the Republicans. Jesus Christ. Even though Democrats don't care about this, we are so ineffective right now. It's not even funny. 50% though. Oh, good God. In the back rooms. I'm sorry, Mr. Vice President. The Urban Affairs Act isn't looking likely to get out of committee. What? Birch Bay's mind went blank at the report. That hadn't been the plan at all. Who's holding it up? We made sure the RDC had enough people to move things through. The debate's going around in circles. And you know how senators are. I'll tell them to get with the program, but we've seen... We've been doing that already. Do it again, Bay hung up. His mind beginning to race through the contingency plans, but not before telling Chep. What do you mean the bill's been installed? Chep Stone was incredulous as Bay's been earlier. We made sure the RDC had enough people. Yeah, we did. I'm going to read them the riot act, well, Bay said, stopping Chep from going over details they both knew. Funny how everyone is saying that the act's praise on the floor is getting cold feet now. There's got to be a reason, Chep said, as much as he, to himself as Bay. There has to be. I'll ask around. A lot more leverage twisting arms from the Oval Office. You just keep them sticking to the script and the public in case the press starts knocking. Don't ask how the sausage is made without reward. On Capitol Hill, Mr. Vice President, uh, Senator Humphrey proffered his hand. It's good to see you, Birch. Bay shook his hand, landing an affectionate punch to the Senator's arm. You too, uh, Hubert. I just things have been all right on the Hill since we since I've gone. Humphrey frowned. As a matter of fact, Mr. Vice President, that's why I'm here. Things have changed for the worst since Phil. May God bless his soul. Past time. Forget about passing the urban affairs facts and coming for the URI. They're moving quickly, aren't they? Maybe so, Birch. But we think they have good reason too. Humphrey passed over files. Those are the latest polling numbers, and they're bad news for us, Mr. Vice President. Hard kelp keep the URI above water without him. Like blood in the water, Bay murmured, flipping through the data. The president needs to hear about this. Humphrey nodded. You're in for a fight, Mr. VP. They've been gunning for a chance like this since Ike, and they've got the public on their side for once. It seems like if they want to fight, Hubert, they'll get a fight. The entire urban renewal initiative faces the threat of being undone. Not just a work, but something billions of Americans rely on by thread. Managed man. People often say marriage is tough, but you never know how tough. At first, you make sacrifices you never thought you'd have to make. It turns you into a person you can't recognize in the mirror. At least you feel all hollow inside. Sometimes we lay awake at night and wonder if the Kennedys ever felt the same. But it isn't about them. This is about Zaza. We've tried to be patient and understanding, but things haven't been good between us for a long time. For a long while. She said things hate horrible things to the press. She's last year not looking for a way to hurt us and the country. God. Given Jane's advice, uh, we, we know we can't ignore that any longer. we got to talk to her and reach All right, everyone. So right now, I've kind of been experimenting with stuff. My save game can't be saved anymore because of the temporary file thing, but uh, it's not going very well for us. And as you can see, urban stability plans have been eradicated. Uh, that's not good. Oh, my God. Panic and Chep Bay were walking down the halls of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. Chep and Bay were half running around, half walking down the halls of the Department of the group. Uh, Chep and Bay broke into a light sprint, leaving the secretary detail behind in a befuddled group of department staffers in the wake. It would have been comical if not for the look of sheer panic on their faces. It was a scene that Jane Jacobs walked into as she turned the corner towards her office. Gentlemen, why, my God, what? Jane, the real rad dude, to go for the whole thing. They're, we wanted to get here to tell you before they heard from anyone else. It's you URI. They continued rambling. Jane felt like a school teacher trying to calm two children, urged them to hush, and join her in her, her office. The two men, the two most powerful men in the country, slumped into their chairs and with some coaxing, rattled off the whole sordid affair of the URI repeal effort. The efforts of reform, the hardball threats, the mobilizing of conservative activists. Well, I can't say I'm not disappointed. She forced herself to give 
the president a compliment, but I appreciate you looking in He's so early. Jared moved a glass on the side. I won't lie when I say this is serious. Reactionaries always take tactics like these, promising to reform while holding a knife behind their back. The only way to fight back in these kinds of confrontations is to prove that they aren't popular, so rally a huge, huge public movement. I do New York against Moses, and as much as I hate to admit it, you do did it against Long in New Orleans, chap. Well, those were cities. How do you do that countrywide? Jacob's grimace. Well, I believe we'll need to assemble what they call a dream team. Heart monitor is still recovering. Remember, so it was a quiet on Calvert uh, Street. The long, quiet, first long, quiet night that Jane Hart had enjoyed in full time. Long time. The kids that finally left the house returned to their own lives, families, and careers. The reporters still enlisted in the first days after their husband's passing had stopped camping outside her home. All that remained was her and her husband's security detail. Both enjoyed the chance to be idle, blissfully detached from Washington. Then, without warning, there was a ring on the telephone. Jane let it ring once and twice before she raised herself from the den, the place where Philip had spent his final few days, then towards the kitchen. Hello? Oh, there's a White House switchboard, patching through the president, please hold. Said a young woman, there's a buzz. Then Chef was on the line, hello, Jane, it's Chef. The president, I, I hope I'm not catching you at a bad time. Jane repressed a smile. Even after everything, it was remarkable how awkward Chef could be. Not at all, how can I help you? I'm not sure if you're watching the TV right now, but I want to let you know that the presidential library is built past. There was a pause, I wanted to be the first. I wanted to, to be the first to let you know that we're going to preserve Philip's legacy. Another pause. There'll be a whole building, an entire campus if you want to make sure everyone knows of his integrity. Jane closed her eyes and gave a sad smile. Thank you, Chef, that, that means a lot. Really, I know things were hard in the last few days, but Phil really thought of the world of you. I hope you know that. There was another long silence, but this time, Cheney thought she could hear someone checking down south. Thank you, Cheney. If you haven't picked a location for the library yet, I have some ideas, Chip. Well, his legacy? Bells come. Oh. Organizing opposition to the URI bells. The cabinet recovers. Oh, Jesus. Decrease. The body blow. Morrison here. Chip had answered the phone on the second ring. I've expected a call from Bayer for some time. I've been dreading it, truthfully, knowing that the unfriendly sin is way more likely not to pass a bill. The awkward pause from Bay only confirmed him to his positions. Well, Jeff thought to himself that if he was lucky and the Senate had saw some sense, he could veto the bill. Mr. President, I'm so sorry, but the bill passed with a supermajority. I tried to get some of the friendly senators on board, but they would barely hear me out, let alone switch their votes. Bay sounded deeply apologetic. Well aware of this, man to Morrison. The veto option last chance was gone. Jeff squeezed his eyes closed. Darn, 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 another failure. Another slap in the face from a senator, or from a Senate, so eager to tear everything he and so many others had worked for into pieces. Sitting in the Oval Office, ha phone in hand, finally felt suddenly the loneliest he ever felt in his life. He hung up after murmuring goodbye to Bay. He saved the cabinet, at least he had that. The president's thighs as his headache came on. I'm sure the URI was being ripped apart, but the state of ship was saved aside from that. What could any other president have done? Could Felt Part have charmed an austerity mad sent from hacking his ambitions down to size? Jeff was certainly given it his all, hadn't he? It was just cursed by circumstances, by bad luck, by the URI's, enemy, URI's enemies. Once upon a cruel by the day, and on and on the excuses went. Collateral oh damage. This bill is a rough one, Mr. President. Birch Bay says he'll look up from the piece of legislation in front of him and privatize the darn most of the URI's public sector jobs. I doubt one in ten survives once the private sector trims them down to bare necessities. The stubbornness of the conservatives on the topic nearly made Chet laugh at this point. The conservatives and deficit hawks in the Senate were pulling hundreds of thousands of jobs on the line. They weren't the pencil pushing bureaucrats or the right rhetorically targeted, but instead those who maintain and expand America's infrastructure. Much growing after President Hart's tenure. With these workers gone, America's transportation artists would begin to atrophy. Chap found it nearly <clears throat> funny until Bay walked him through the Senate's disposition. The bill could still be very well passed with a veto proof majority, which wiped away any head of mirth from his face. He still had a job to do in a battle to fight. Uh, Chap, uh, there were marginal senators. One who would appreciate the administration directing their favors their way, or who would appreciate assistance during campaign season, of course. The activists. Could also be useful if they deployed properly. And of course, these workers themselves had every incentive to fight for their livelihoods, as did every American who used America's roads, rails, or waterways. Thank you, uh, Vice President Bay. He replied, coming out of his pondering, I'll start working my way down the list, and you do the same. With enough elbow grease, uh, I can see at least three or four senators here who can see sense. Bay nodded and left, leaving Chip to begin his task. Good afternoon, Senator. Are you sure you can lose this many jobs in your state? America's Choice Act. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's not good, 93. Uh, that's not good. He's sluggish, though, because now we are at down here. I mean, cool. I'm not talking. You are a question better. Managed man. A uh, Socratic so approach. As Chep talked, Jacobs finally saw what she'd been missing for years. She recalled how during the Hart administration, whenever she confronted him, he had backed down each time. At the time, she had chucked it up to the strength of her arguments, a force of will, perhaps, as cowardice. Now she was worried that every time she had stood up to him, her victory had come through unknowing exploitation of his dysfunctional relationship. Hart had mentioned it to her, though she had only gotten a full view of the problems now. She'd been proud to know the warning signs of such things, but her ill will to Chip had turned a blind eye to the situation. Now, however, she knew she had to help him. What do you want out of your marriage, Chip? she asked. The president halted mid sentence, the question requiring a few minutes of careful thought. He was still getting used to her new attitude towards him. I remember with my first wife, Corrine, before she passed, he said with a wistful, sad smile. She wouldn't yell. <clears throat> I wouldn't, I didn't feel like I was on thin ice every moment of my life. I guess it was a normal marriage rather than some something, uh, rather than something truly special. Zaza and me, we've had some good times, but the lows were, he trailed off. 
<clears throat> uh, uh, Jacob's not. He needs to process the problem. Rather than have Jacob's shepherd him through it. You think you can have a normal marriage with Zaza? Jeff's eyes dropped. The implicit underlying uh, follow-up question hung in the air between them as he pondered. Any animosity had disappeared hours ago, uh, replaced by an awkward enmity. Then the words both knew they were coming from the creeping from the present lips. No. Oh boy. Hey, I got a couple more roads done, though. The mask. Jeff Morrison and Jane Jacobs were still discussing his marriage even after hours of the discussion. Jacobs was careful not to push the president. With a single misstep, she might cause him to close up again, ruining any chance of improving his marriage. Still, however, she was worried that she was not being very fully honest with her. I agree with Jacobs that Zaza may not be perfect and could be kinder in tone, but she's not pushing me around. Chip was still unwilling to admit that he never stood up to Zaza, taking her tirades in silence, even fear. Something the man refused to admit that the situation was exactly as it appeared. Chip, do you think I, you, don't, you don't think I don't see how things are? <clears throat> she asks. I see how she yells and you don't respond. Uh, she, how she makes decisions and you accept them, accept them without question. She'll leave on vacation at the drop of a hat and never pretend to even invite you. It's okay to admit that the way she treats you is domineering, she halted, seeing Jeff's face freeze. She knew as she crossed the line, he was not ready for her. I love my wife, Miss Jacobs, but I'm the president of the U.S. She does not boss me around and I'm my own man. I know this marriage can work. It's just a matter of effort and divorce is out of the question. Jacob didn't like it, but knew and did not push. Very well, Mr. Morrison, but leave some room for yourself, too, in this marriage. Work is all good and well, but both of you have to be willing to put it in. Chep nodded, and Jacobs knew. He was not listening like he had been before. She got to leave, and Chep thanked her, but something in between them seemed to have dismissed, dissipated. Sometimes all you can do is try. And sometimes trying is not enough, but there's nothing you can do about it. Some things are destined to fail. Very cool and calm? Yeah, why not? Might as well. Oh, boy. You know, it does make sense. We're failing all of these, but... Prediction. Look at even seven centers now. Look at that. Am I swing for Republicans? Good God. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, <clears throat> Rex Joyce Act. Uh, the news from the Senate had chipped like a lightning bolt. Bay had, hadn't called this time. It had been a friendly Democrat who had voted against the bill and volunteered to help tell the president the bad news. Jeff had thanked the man for his time, the vote before hanging out the phone, before letting his head fall in his hands. <coughs> they expected the bill to pass. That would have been bad, but at least he still had the option of veto. Then the conservatives would have to water the bill down and pass it through the Senate again. If they locked the votes, he could always have sent it right back to them again. But that didn't happen. Instead, a super majority of the Senate passed America's Choice Act despite its administration and its allies' lobbying. Now, tens of thousands of Americans would wake up tomorrow with a cloud over them, never knowing when their job would vanish and their lives would be uprooted forever. I really bore thinking about, but in the moment of this absolute defeat, all Chuck could think of was everyone and he and the Senate had failed. It rarely felt quite so alone as he did now. There's nothing the Bay could do at this point, and his touch with the Senate had been insufficient. It was now a matter of waiting for the next blow to fall. Nor could he stand seeing Jacobs. She would have even more acutely aware of this bell's fall and seeing the disappointment in her eyes would be intolerable. Uh, Sign deeply reached for the phone. He had been knocked down, but it was only beaten when he stayed there. His foes were on the march, and he, so he had to be too. A lonely man, a lonely task. What is this? Heart monitor. Oh, God. Reserved. Support of the 0%. Nobody's handling the organization. Sluggish. Reshuffle the agenda. Bells come. Begin organizing this group. Stretching himself thin the more groups he's assigned to. Let's go on civil rights, maybe? Or let's do rural America. Um. Well, we need more political power. We'll get there eventually. No sleep. It's been a long time coming. Oh, actually, it's this one too first. Managed man. <coughs> long time coming. This saw no matter of brand was ever going to stop. At every corner of this conservative establishment for the national view to the American Enterprise Institute has gathered the forces to loot and pillage this administration. Their agents march through the calls of Congress, ready to take down the URI like the old Visigoths took out down Rome. It's an awful, awful thing. All we can do is watch it unfold. Every day we pace through the halls of a house we never wanted, surrounded by people we don't like in a country that does not know us. We spend sleepless nights pouring Phillips old paper trying to find some secret to fix this whole gosh darn mess and make it turn out all right. Are we the right man for this fight, or will we end up with nothing but a grave digger of history? Polls. Jim Morrison did not enjoy the West Wing, behind the White House's state exterior. The building was cramped. Staffers complained of the rats and cockroaches. It was a miracle that people still wanted to visit the building, let alone spend hours inside. Yet, here Chet found himself in this private city long past working hours, going through the cities he commissioned from Gallup. He had never gotten ahead for numbers, but the results were obvious. Conservatives were coalescing against the UR in the name of reform, while liberal, uh, 
The voters remain a divided and disinterested. Focus groups will show rural voters up in arms about federal waste, while urban voters were apathetic at best. He appeared to say that in Sands. There's a knock at the door. Chef Darling is getting late, and the chef, chef will look very much like he served dinner before he goes home. Chef Turner thought you were doing that Coca Cola thing. Oh, film, filming finished out ages ago. First Lady Zaza Gabor slided it across, gilded across the room, and leafed through the pages on Chef's desk. There was curiosity on her face. What is that that has you here working so late, anyways? Those awful brutes in Congress? Chef couldn't help but smile at that. Paul Laxall had once made the mistake of criticizing Zaza in the post, and she'd never forgiven him. Chef gestured to San you see all the usual suspects are on the warpath. Riling people up, lobbying attacks to me on this morning shows. There was real interest in Zaza's voice as she said down the papers. Darling, you know I've yet to find a talk show that didn't want me as a guest. If you wanted, I could. She showed off, but Jeff could see the offer of help clearly. She, he gave a weak smile. As long as you can help me find time in your schedule. Uh, resolution, good afternoon, Secretary Jacobs. Jeff's greeting had a friendly ring to it. Him from the tents of best relationship during the hard administration. Good afternoon, <clears throat> uh, President Morrison. Good, nice to see you, uh, sir. Indeed, any hint of tension between the president and the HEW secretary vanished, replaced by a collegial air common among friendly workers. It had been some time since they had late discussed. Last discussed his marriage, and to Jacobs' experience, I, Morrison, did not seem to wish to take it any further. I appreciate your help, Secretary Jacobs, the president said, leaving the topic of the things deliberately vague. You knew that he owed her not only for assistance with the URI, but also her personal advice, however hard it had been to accept her points. Now, however, it was some time to focus on the work. The opportunity to help save the URI and some people's hard work is more than enough thanks. Mr. President, she replied. Seeing the shadows of guilt in his eyes, she pressed on, and now I've seen how hard you worked on the program's behalf. I had American know how you trade your best. Going forward, it'll be my turn to try to keep the URI together. I hope you have better luck than I did. Not a tough act to follow, though, and I'll be rooting for you. Jeff replied. His trademark smirk uh, made a brief grim reappearance. Jacobs returned a smile and excused herself. She had work to do. Hatch is buried. Motivation will increase. She'll join. Thank God. Um, cause you can't do it alone. You really just can't. Anything you do. Um, she's pretty good. What is it? Civil rights is fine with URI repeals, reserved repeals, supportive of repeals, city goers. Henry Kissinger. Eugene, Eugene McCarthy. Oh, he can do that one, yeah. Stop her shenanigans. I'm not sure who's going to be best. Assign Jane Jacobs to the city goers? Yeah, that'd be good. It's fine. Real America, well, uh, uh, oh, we're gonna shuffle it, okay. Fundraiser, Chef and Zaza were Democratic Party fundraiser for the URI with the Watergate Hotel. With four smiles, a pair dutifully took photos of the party donor after donor. They laughed at all the right jokes and endured their wealthy backers' painful attempts at a banter. As the night approaches closed, the president and his wife excused themselves to the coat room. These stupid, stupid, silly guys got the money's worth, muttered Zaza under her breath. Hands all over me. I'm a professional, not a prostitute. Chef grimaced. The eagerness of the certain donors had not escaped him, but in his mind, it came with the territory. There were still horror stories in D.C. about what Nixon had subjected his wife to. Listen, Chip said as he handed a ticket to the, the coat room clerk. Maybe it's a good idea for you to step back from these types of events for a bit. The press office is still a little, you know. The clerk returned with a jacket. Chip's uh, trench coat and Zaza's fur. She was quiet as he draped it uh, over uh, <clears throat> her shoulders. Fire me, darling, she said with a surprise sadness. It had been the direction he was expecting. No, it's not. It's all right, Delapsis. Uh, de I'm never one to stay on the stage long after the curtain falls. They'll walk with a set of Secretary, Secret Service agents to the elevator and then across the main lobby. I'll, I will say I enjoy the work, brief as it was. Politics has never been my talent, but I appreciate you giving me a chance. The President feels a mixture of guilt and confusion on the right of the White House. His courage. Eugene McCarthy is an odd fellow. Uh, a little awkward and unabiding at the best of times. In a moment of crisis, Chip expected the man to... Well, yet in this moment, as he had... Ali stepped up to the plate as much as he could. Anyway, as the Secretary of Agriculture attempted to respond to the mass and new complaints about Chef's administration, McCarthy's office had turned into a mess of scattered papers with, with McCarthy practically squeezed inside. It was this disheveled heap that Chip walked into. In the chaos of these last few months, the man felt right at home. McCarthy, as his eyes sunken, loosely waved the President into his chair. Good to see you, Mr. President. These months, I feel like a test. I think I'm winning, but it feels like the load is killing me. Chip, himself worse for wear, nodded. I know, Eugene. I'm sorry to be putting something else on your plate. Chip placed the manila folder. Onto the stack of McCarthy's death. The farmers. It's not just that they hate us, they their hate fuels the anti URI movement. We need to improve our relationship with them as it stands, the threads on the brink of snapping every day. If there's anything in it, do I mean anything that you can do to fix this, you've got to pull the trigger. Don't get me wrong, I support the URI, it's good work. I've always said that, but I'm supposed to be an apolitical body. I just can't be cleaning up the president's messes. Still, I'll do everything I can to clean up your image with the farmers. 
Fit home on the campaign trail anyways. Morning. I saw came through the night was long and hard. Uh, the Hawks came at us with everything they had. Coral Island senators from all parts of the country to support their URI bill. They could have destroyed us. They could have destroyed hard. God rest his soul. But we held our defenses. We stopped the dudes at the gates and let us see New Dom. Something has changed in Washington and in this whole presidency. If it's visible in the White House, it's visible from Congress. Everyone knows that Chet Morrison isn't some southern softy that you can push around. He's going to use everything he's got to keep the country moving. Activist groups that aren't managed by Chapel gain 1.5 Extra Organization Weekly. Oh. Okay, so I we reshuffled the cabinet, but... Diplomacy home and abroad, and that, Mr. President, is a rough approximation of our geopolitical situation. Secretary of State Kissinger said to his new boss, It's my opinion that our best course will be continue with our initiative from the previous administration. We must continue striving for detente with Japan and fight German influence whenever we can. If you have any special prerogatives or perspectives on our foreign policy, I would like to hear it. Chip Morrison glanced up, meeting Kissinger's eyes for the first time. Ah, oh, no, Dr. Kissinger. That sounds about right. I'll leave foreign affairs to your uh, capable hands. Kissinger gave a clip nod, rising to leave. Well, I wait, Chip said. Actually, one more thing I wanted to ask you about. Kissinger turned dutifully, yes? I'm sure you heard about all this hullabub about the URI bill, Chip said. Congress is trying to cut away President Hart's legacy. And the press are hounding us, taking any chance they can to make us look weak. If you could just do something to get the press off us, that would be a big help. Kissinger adjusted his glasses. Much as I wish I could, Mr. President, but I'm afraid I'm quite busy with the Cold War, he said. Besides, media relations are not surely my area of expertise. I, of course, wish you luck in domestic agenda without waiting for the dismissal. He bowed his head and left. Guess we're on our own. Yay. Dear Mr. Rustin, oh, hello, I hope this letter reaches you well. I was hoping I might be able to meet you in person at the funeral. I'm sorry if you were not invited or otherwise opposed, though I understand your discretion. I wish I had been able to, you had been able to meet Hart. I'm sure you two would have gotten along. This is not the subject to which I'm writing, rather my concern and my impetus. Lots of the gap that he has left behind, my fellow cabinet members and I have spent the last few months in a state of perpetual crisis. With Hart's oratory skills and congressional authority, we've been left to rely on Chet Morrison, who lacks the ability or personal strength to properly navigate the political system. With his defense, Congress has come to pick apart the Urban Renewal Initiative. Conservative and rural legislatures began fighting against the core of the program, picking apart its protections, hoping to break apart its core administration. They lampooned it as an expensive waste, one which does not protect the constituencies. I'll cut straight to my point, Mr. Rustin. I need your help. Without proper defense, you or I and all the good is done for the upper privilege of America might be destroyed whenever uh, you might be visiting Washington. I ask that you might visit me in person. Your insight would be valuable, even necessary in this moment of crisis. Yours, Jane Jacobs. Party. U.S. Sequoia was a beautiful boat. Uh, the only yacht available to the president for the most of his administration, Ch Congress have been urging him to sell the darn thing to be rid of the relic of a bygone era. As the final Congress with the URI came to a head, Philip had finally relented. He'd sell it. He just wanted one more ride. As the ship sailed deep into the Chesapeake, President Chet Morrison stumbled towards the stern where his wife lay stretched across the sea. Enjoying the ride, Zaza? Through her sunglasses, the first lady gave a weak smile. It's not the, the biggest ship I've been on, but they were worse things. She looked uh, across the bay. It reminds me of the last holiday my sisters and I had before we left Hungary. We took a train to the Mediterranean. We bought some grapes. It was a beautiful day. Chips, Chip stared at her, realizing for the first time how little time they had alone. How often they were acting for the public, for the press. Zaza, he said in low voice, do you think this us can work? After the presidency, do you think we could be salt-whipped past our faces? Zaza stared at the horizon. I've tried to be an equal partner to the last steps. There's so many times when I just, just, just could have left, but I wanted to be part of something. Not just a joke. They'll never believe it, but I tried so hard. They're silent for a long time. The waves crashed against the boat. You can leave, Zaza. I won't stop you. Chip's voice cracked. You deserve happiness just as much as me. Such a silly, sentimental man, muttered Zaza. She moved her glasses and wiped away something from her eyes, all white, until we left Washington. They all find an arrangement. We looked ahead, it was a beautiful day. Chep and Zaza's marriage reached its end, but there's, only no ma there's no malice between them, only sadness. They must suck being Chep right now. But at least the roads are getting better. Okay. Let's begin new. Secretary McCarthy, what do you got for me? Let's go to the Chep that McCarthy had been hard work, per usual. He seemed entired and energized all at once. Power by whatever caffeine and personal determination was keeping him from falling asleep, kind of like me. Water prepared, Chip was prepared to accept whatever McCarthy was, he was getting at. He needed good news from the Secretary of Agriculture in whatever form he might come. McCarthy leaned forward and put all out of his briefcase, fiddling with it as he spoke. You remember our conversation a few weeks ago? Well, I had an idea about it. Called up an advertising agency and got those printed. McCarthy's briefcase opened, he pulled something out of it, uh, slapping it on Chip's desk. Pamphlets, colorful pamphlets with graphs and plans explaining URI to benefits to your rural communities. Chip picked up one design and rifled through it. Admiring all the graphics and arguments. It's nice, McCarthy. Punchy, clean, modern. It's good work. Chip got up, began to move around the office. Now, this unpleasant part, I need you to know on the onset that this is your department's work. You'll have to sort out the distribution of these. McCarthy grimaced. I understand. I have a lot on my plate with what the rural pushback, but I can get this through. You smell faintly, which made him look even better. I'm just happy to help. 
Hey, 99%. Not bad. Same for Winter Diner. I don't know if I can help you, Miss Jacobs. Jane Jacobs and Bay are Russ meeting was short and to the point. Instead of the mediocre diner in the heart of Washington, Jacobs and Russ had exchanged many pleasantries and acquired no more from each other. There was less than a conversation. This was a negotiation or perhaps a desperate plea. You know, I wouldn't ask for this if it wasn't important, Jacobs responded, still staring into her coffee. We need to find support in minority communities, and we, even if, if we even have a chance of getting the UR through the, without some cuts. If you don't know, or help now. And much for everything we've helped organize. That you have organized, Quip Rustin. I'm not saying that it's not worth saving, but you are not the problem here. It's a chef. In my days with Reverend King, I saw Morrison's Louisiana, and it was no different than Wallace's Alabama or Fabulous's Arkansas. The man was committed, seriously committed, to the institution's segregation, and now he's looking for a bailout from the black community? President Morrison isn't asking for your help, Rustin. I am. Just come to the White House, please. Hear us out. We can work out there. I'll work from there. After a minute of silence, Rustin finally nodded. Noon. Dawn moves, north. Dawn moves towards noon. The noon rises. sun rises from its lowest point to the highest. God darn it, it doesn't look gorgeous, but if it isn't a beautiful day to entertain a few folks from the good old days of the Hart Administration. The person we're most interested in entertaining right now is Walter Reuther. When the first news first emerged from that Philip, may rest in peace, would hand us the reins, Reuther took a step back. He didn't know if we were a friend or enemy, if we had it in us to stand against a gosh darn bunch of hawks from our Congress. Now that he knows we have a fight in us, he's willing to mobilize his boys to stop the conservative dudes. The two of us can really work together to show just what the Democratic Party can do when it's united. Twisting the arm. Kissinger wrote in the Oval Office, trying to not look too far down his nose at the president. He had exactly like Hart by the end, his idealism clouded his judgments. But he had been, on his own way, deserving of Kissinger's respect. Morrison, though. The man was the timid simpleton. And Kissinger could handle timid simpletons, like, fine, except for... Just fine, except when they tried to drag him down with them. <clears throat> As apparently his alleged boss was not trying to do. Morrison leaned forward, failing to hide his nervousness. I'm sorry to bother you again, Dr. Kissinger, but the situation with the URI is really getting desperate in. As I said, Dr. K Dr. Kissinger replied, your eyes out of my purview. I do wish you luck, but Mor Morrison slammed his fist on his table. I didn't exactly make what Kissinger I didn't exactly make Kissinger jump, but it didn't. His objection died in his throat. What do you think Phil Shalethi would think of your purview? Morrison asked. Or Scoop Jackson, if the URI fails, his administration goes down. I'm not asking you to intervene directly, but play to the press, grapple for their attention. We need more headline grabbers like the business with Japan. Kissinger found himself nodding, he approached like being a fair point. After all, American diplomacy would benefit from a certain level of renewed visibility. Well, very well. We can certainly step up efforts to hem in the Reich's European sphere. A uh, classic case of misdirection. Alright, so... As long as you have enough political power, stable, you know. We have no more political power now. It will organize all groups at 0% of its maximum. So, like, even doing that does nothing. A southern charm. You know, the Hart administration has done a lot for the black society. Bayer Russ never planned on meeting Chip, sure. He hit up out with Hart with <clears throat> some useful reforms in the cities, but this man was a southern governor during the height of segregation with Chip invited Russ to meet with him and Jacobs. Russ would try to come up with a good outlook. A few friends had described Chip as a reformer, after all, and certainly soaked up the black vote during his time in New Orleans. But so far, the verdict remained dead decidedly negative. You are as it touched a lot of urban minority communities, Chip continued. Heck, we saved a lot of communities that even FDR wouldn't touch. Black folks got a lot of wa wins, a lot of wins. Jeff chuckled to himself for a moment. Now we're hoping to flip the table, so to speak. We need help from folks like you, men who can organize the minorities of America to fight for the country. That sounds good? Jeff burst out of his widest smile. Burst out. Uh, Russ took some care in his response. What makes you so certain I'm going to say yes? Jeff blurted out a response with a mix of confusion and indignation. Should I be thinking so should I Should I be thinking otherwise? Russ turned to his friend Jane Jacobs, who appeared to be cringing in her seat. I think perhaps this matter is best handled between the two of us. President Morrison brings a southern charm to the White House and supper. The mud day turns to dusk. Busy people return from work. They're tired, exhausted, ready for to let off some steam. More than anything else, they want to be entertained. Looking for us, Chet Morrison has always been good at that. As the conservatives continue their assault on the legacy fell apart, grant him sincerity, oh lord. President Morrison is going to be on the TV every night reminding America what it is exactly they're threatening to do. This isn't about the numbers on a balance sheet. Oh no, it's about starving kids getting fed clean. Well, pay of roads. We'll use the most outrageous rhetoric we can think of. Little old ladies being gunned down in the streets. Families freezing to death in their homes to remind them of what's at stake here. If we can rile people up, chances are we can spook off some of our opposition. With our advantage, we'll make our final moves to win this muscling in conflict with the anti URI coalition. Super K to the rescue. Kissinger climbed up the steps of the jet, turning at the top to a wave for the cameras. That's the lights. Are the flashes down in his eyes? A reporter in the audience raised her hand. Dr. Kissinger, what can you tell us about the purpose of this new diplomatic adventure or initiative? <clears throat> Sweden's importance geopolitically has skyrocketed in the recent years due to the reunification of Russia, Kissinger said. It's now situated right next to a renewed con conflagration in Eastern Europe. It was vital that we align Sweden to American interests if we were to take advantage of this to chance. To strike a blow against the enemy of freedom worldwide, I look forward to discussing with the Prime Minister of Sweden the opportunities for further cooperation. 
Uh, President Morrison's pumped a fist as he watched Kissinger turn and enter the plane on TV. That ought to play well. Sweden had long been a part of the German sphere. The fact that they were hosting the American Secretary of State and a Jew to boot was sure to be a coup, and the most important of all would keep the eyes of the media off that darn URI bell. Jeff felt like pouring himself a drink, and things were looking up, up, look, up in the sky. An America of confidence. <clears throat> Chep walked out of the conference hall. Meetings with the congressional committees had his way of sapping all the remaining energy out of Chep. Every darn question needed an answer. Every darn person needed to feel called and validated until they agreed not to sign off on a bill. It was a never-ending cycle, and Chep was burning out. Suddenly, he heard a voice from the other end of the hallway, and an unassuming man who was running towards him. McCarthy, you know, seemed to have gone to a meeting here as well. Mr. President, good to see you, the secretary shouted, his voice just a little out of breath. As he got closer, he slowed to a walk, and his voice quieted. I have some good news for you if you like it. Are you kidding? Chep said frustrated. I'll take any good signs I can get. McCarthy spit it out. McCarthy quickly uh, began speaking. While well, recruitment in the Department of Agriculture has risen, we're getting a lot of recruits from rural areas, the same regions where the URI backlash began given the department's current recruitment drive, we can assume that they have read the pamphlets. And they must like what they're hearing. Good job, Gene. Chip patted McCarthy in the back, nearly knocking him over. Getting the farmers on our side, that's one step closer to shuffle, shutting down this whole backlash. Glad I ran into you. With a smile on his face, Jeff turned towards the double doors. As he left, he looked back at McCarthy. As he ruffled through his notes and walked to his next meeting, it seems like the secretary's found his footing. Good, okay, that's better. To labor for progress, Morrison wrapped his fingers against the resolute desk, listening to the phone dial ring through the eardrums like a fire alarm, waiting for the other end to pick up. If he could get the support from the URI, he knew he may well give up now, and Chep wasn't the kind of man to give up easily. Reuther speaking, the voice in the end responded quizzically. Afternoon, Reuther, it's Morrison. I was wondering if you'd hear the, or the Urban Renewal Initiative. Uh, I've been leading in the Senate, that I've been leading in the Senate. Uh, I'm more to both of our interests that your support would do more than enough to sway our things. So wait, or sway things our way. So if the question stands, can I count you on in for this? The line stayed silent for a moment as Reuther continued the proposition. I think we both uh, ought to say yes. We both, I think we both know I ought to say yes, but my schedule's not exactly clean. The press working to ruin me like there's no tomorrow, and aside from that, what are you asking of me exactly? Jeff felt a slight grin on August's face and leaned back in his chair. Not that much, Reuther, just a hand in mobilizing support for the URI. I know I'm not hard, but we still got an obligation to work together on these things, especially when they're as important as this. Too true, Jeff thought. So far as he's seen, the two were practically symbiotic in their work routine. And in such a way that Morrison could easily fill a gap, a sigh emanated from the phone. All right, Chuck, where do you need me? I just need you to come to Washington. Looking at things out there. Thanks a lot, Roy. Are you sure you're all on board with all this? Sure, Chuck. It's just all wearing me thin. And everyone else. Faith in the same. Finally, the later. I came in. My apologies. Ooh, we did the. Ooh, we did the. Friction. Okay. Um, had le arrived from the HUD main office. Jacobs typically remained composed in her time of government, but she had been spent more time than she wished to admit, fretting over Russell's response. She had stuck her neck out trying to get him on her side, saying no would be devastating, and he had so many reasons to decline. By the time it arrived, she could barely find the patience to grab her pen knife before slicing it over. She looked it over. A quick scan found the keyword help. She could finally breathe. Yet, yeah, after a close reading, it was remarkable just how much he was promising. It was more than just some advisory meetings, rather, it was planned to create a real campaign of support for the URI. Raised from urban black activists. Clearly, the Russian believed the black community agreed with his views on the issue. It wasn't just a favor, this was a major show of confidence from one of the largest civil rights leaders in America. Jacob's took over the last line, just as long as I never have to speak to your boss again. Huh. With a gentle touch, she placed the letter back in its envelope, flooded it and followed it in her desk, and pulled out a pen. Her first task was to write up a response. She started with the first word she could think of. Thank you. Excuse me. Nice. Nobody's doing civil rights stuff. Well, provide organizational. Russell will give a boost to all groups not currently being managed by Chap. Well, he's doing the union, so. But we're out of this. Indecisive, oppose, oppose, supportive. Well, we'll see. His motivation is strong, but, like, we're out of political power now, too. It's your face. Now comes the end of the night, and with it, the end of the whole rotten mess. We've done good, staying strong, keeping on the defense. We didn't let the dudes get us down, as Nixon would have said. And with his enemies repelled, it's time for us to press our own case. And note that. Uh, Congress wants to kill little old ladies and starving kids and the homeless. Is that it does nothing except that? What we got in Washington is a do-nothing Congress, one so beholden to radicals like Phyllis Schlafly and Barry Goldwater that they're unwilling to do anything to help the American people. We'll talk to reporters about all the things that Congress hasn't been doing, how they killed price controls and killed any hope of housing, a housing bill. We'll talk about how the only thing on conservatives' minds is making sure that old poor old chips will one-term president. Is the main division wait, maybe completely restored? Well, he's strong. Hey, they're organized against the Europeans. Touch down in Washington, get clean, clean for Gene. Mr. President, I have something interesting to report. You remember the pamphlet that the Department of Agriculture printed out a few months ago? I do, Gene. Something changed there? Well, yeah, there's been development. 
I see a few of those pamphlets contain some notes of political persuasion, environmentalism, gene clean government, common sense ideas in my view. Somehow they've started circling with the urban youth. I keep getting letters from them. They're saying that they're willing to fight for the URI and some protests go to door to door. It's really remarkable. They're talking about hippies here? Don't call them hippies. The chap, they're your supporters, but they fit the criteria. And you found them. I suppose so. Well, we'll be darned. I guess if you can get them running defense, it can hurt. Just make sure they clean it up first. Sure. Passionate. Touchdowns in Washington. Waiting by a presidential limousine as a Boeing 747 taxi to the airport, Chubb washes with sympathy as Ruther scurried down the staircase towards the waiting car. After bravely exchanging pleasantries, they both sat down as the limousine sped up towards the White House. Uh, <clears throat> Ruther, I cannot thank you enough for coming here. Your flight was well, I take it? Morrison asked with a slight edge to his voice. Ruther gave him a puzzled, if understanding look. Chip, I'd be the second. That'd be the second time you asked. I hadn't exactly warmed up to flying in 15 minutes. You seem a bit off. Are you feeling all right? Morrison little sighed, slid down his chair, losing his composure. Harold, look. Uh, no, Ruther, I'm really not. I'm sorry to drop this on you, but I've been through more than the theatricals than governing lately, and I'm only getting more sick of it. And sick of both, really. Even being around that darn Boeing. Ruther nodded emphatically, with more of a touch than of enthusiasm. I know it all too well. If you don't mind me telling the truth, my flight was downright dreadful. Nothing particularly bad about it. I just always had a fear of flying, you know. Bad feelings from those. Ruther said, watching as Morrison began to nod, still staring straight forward, though seeming more lively now. You and me both. Ruther, that's what I like best about you. You always seem to be a real spook to the same stuff I am. Chep smiled, glancing over to Reuter. Sure, Chep, but that's the difference between you and me both. You know how to hide what you get spooked of. I just get out there and deal with it. That's why you're in D.C., Reuther. And we got Interstate 10 done, too. Nice. Still zero. Aut autography. Autophagy. Faggy? Faggy, faggy. Autophagy. Chep rolled his eyes as soon as the fast President Bay pulled his chief from the leaf, uh, paper from his photo. Bearing the red lines are in markups of draft legislation. What flavor of snake oil is in Congress telling today? The responsibility is in Government Act, Bay said in Montana. I'm guessing you want one line summary. Summary? Please, Chip waved his hand limply as it pushed the papers away while it mandates its municipal audits of URI funding. Typical. Where the URI money being received? Bay threw the papers on the uh, Chip's desk with a flustering grunt. It's circular BS. When the audits are done, they'll show less money being spent on programs instead of being blaming the audits. Our critics are going to say we're handling our handing out sweetheart contracts or something. Chip rubbed his face, trying to erase the flabbergasted expression. The cynicism in Washington was just as petty as it had been in Louisiana, except with millions of dollars in livelihoods on the line. Why can't Congress just get with the program? A walk through New York. Or the, not New York, but the city. The streets of New York buzz. L.A. stirred. Chicago shook, even the southern states had broken into protest once more. Rarely did the, they did so in support of the U.S. government. Yet the deal between Russell and Jacobs was paying off. The black neighborhoods had come out in support of the Urban Renewal Initiative, protesting to keep their rights as segments of white America seemed to be turning against them. Organized by Rust and their marches for a safer city kept the word world watching the urban streets. Their marches were lit by bright new lampposts paid with URI funds. Their paths were built to highlight the new housing developments where lower income families could find a home. Their marches were walked under new elevated trains which connected their neighborhoods and over repaved streets that kept them safe. Their paths were a tour through the new American city, one designed for the camera crews that followed their every move. Through te televisions across America, people far from city life watched. For those months, every American saw what Hearts Initiative had created and all those people had had help. They might not have been fighting for Hearts Legacy, but they were saving it all the same. Motivation will increase. Oh, that barely did anything. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. The dynasty. It took everything we had in us, but along with the help of a few friends, but we survived an onslaught and made a mark in Washington. There's one more duty left for us, our last chance to honor a truly great president. Campaigns and co-ops. Roy Thurmorson Morrison set opposite each other on the two couches of the Oval Office and all place for discussing campaign tactics. Certainly made odd by the absence of any number of advisors or experts, but Roy and Jeff had both been wanting for a moment of silence and quiet. What confidence did the Union boys have it in them, huh? Morrison asked, arm lying on the headrest of his couch. Of course, Jeff, I wouldn't doubt them for a second. If anyone can back us up on this, it's the Union arm, but my one concern is the civil rights folks. I'd rather not have them wrangle it if we can manage it. Roy Thurmorson says plainly, All right, I understand, but the sport's liable to prove idle, especially in a race as close as this. What resources would you have with them anyway, by the way? Ruther leaned back and gave one thought to gave thought to Morrison's idea for a moment. Well, I do have connections with our leaders, just not much sway. We've coordinated some marches in the past, but it's been fairly superficial for a while. Anyways, can I ask them and see if I can pull out some scares for them? But it'll be a struggle. Morrison not processing the information. And how about those Union boys? How far can they go with us? Chip asked. Any way of concern sitting with them? Ruther smiled and looked at Morrison. Chip, they're already setting up the first marches. Another wave of emotion slapped Morrison as he suppressed a smile growing over his face. Things may well be going the right way for once. Took long enough. Passionate. Stop the decline. Threaten strikes. Civil rights? No, we want unions.
No, I'm probably gonna fail it, but whatever. There's no way to increase the the um, how well we do here too. Stage protests. Take the moral high ground. We're already doing that. Stage of protest sounds like fun. He's passionate though, so that's really good. I'm not really sure. Threaten strikes. There will be delay, but they already have a super majority, so there's no point doing that, so. What if you can make it even higher? Passionate? Is there anything higher than that? Oh. Pick a rest. Just stop the decline. There we go. Okay. Woo! We stopped the decline. Hopefully that will be good. It's still going to fail for now, but, you know, it takes time on these things. Our times are over. Self-reflection. Mr. President, Chet pretending not to hear his aide who was leaning back across the desk with a worried expression on his face. He had, in fact, heard him perfectly fine. But his mind was still hung up on the previous sentence which afforded him. The act passed with a veto-proof majority. Veto-proof? How anyone, much less than much of this Congress, could get beyond one of the most cynical show games devised in recent memory was beyond him. The government would spend money. Uh, on its own wasteful audit and call everything not spent on the audit a waste of funds. And what do you, what come next? Also repeals of President Hart's agenda? Chip wanted to believe that the, this was a bridge too far, but if Congress had just passed this garbage, they'd throw everything at the wall just to see what stuck. Yeah, I heard you, Chip said, as forcefully as good. It's a setback, hopefully temporary. Hopefully. We got even one more Democrat here, too. Like, what the heck? So, 100%, 100%. Now we're 100%. Asking on TV. The footage flashing on the TV matched what Morrison was reading in the newspapers, but couldn't stop double checking just to make sure. Turning up the volume, Morrison sat back down all of what he saw. Earlier today, through the Senator of Massachusetts, is yet to make an official statement, scenes like this are unfolding across the nation. It can be heard from almost any union leader today. The URI stays where the workers leave. The local union leader, the voice on the screen charted away, but the less steps couldn't help but focus on the headlines scattered around his desk. Strikes threaten nationwide over URI. Unions revolt nationwide. The URI sports take to the streets. Morrison chuckled to himself. Reuther had outdone himself, dialing up the phone on his desk. Chep listened to the ringtone for a moment before Reuther picked up. And after a moment exchanging pleasantries, their pair chuckled to each other. Reuther had to say I'm impressed. I hope this wasn't too costly, was it? Morrison asked. So wondering about how many could be mobilized in such a short time. If only he could mobilize these numbers to come next primaries. No, Chip, but don't expect this kind of treatment again anytime soon. Now, this trade will be on every paper in America. I suppose that's the best it can get for this moment. Movement. It only get less coverage from here, you know, Reuther warned. Morrison let out a sigh. I know, Reuther, but if nothing else sways the balance as well. Thank you for that. Of course, Mr. President, I know that if nothing else, the Democratic Party looks after its friends. I hope you'll continue to do so from here on out. It's the least that I can do. He's so passionate. Is, is, is that is it? Threat strikes for shuffle the cabinet. No, we're pretty good with what who we want here. We've got a dream team. Also still zero percent, man. How are we still electrifying stuff too? I guess it takes a long time, but still, man. So, is that it? The reluctant devil advocate? As Jim Morrison read through the latest bill from Congress, he found himself conflicted. The legislation called the Workers' Welfare Act at first appeared like a very mixed bag. It didn't repeal any of the URI's new welfare provisions per se, instead of simply bound to the program in voluminous red tape. In order to access the benefits, workers would have to show proof that they were employed. Now using drugs so that the children were in school, that they were married, and on and on and on. Each individual restriction seemed uh, reasonable on his face, but the pages turned out, concern mounted up within Chap. String enough requirements together, enough demands for proof and paperwork, and the number of people eligible for the programs would shrink accordingly. Another part of them, less charitable, rejoice at these restrictions. Why should public funds go to criminals on drugs who wanted their addictions paid for by John Q. Taxpayer? Should the government be encouraging marriageable work and marriage work in sobriety? We knew deep down that that was not the intent behind the bill, rather than repeal the section of the URI. Like its critics would have instead rope it off with red tape as programs a tantalizing enticement to many Americans who needed who, unfortunately, would never be able to see the program's fruits. Disgust rising in them, he pushed the bill away from him. Another attack on the URI was a progress, and we would have to be ready to bat it away. Hopefully the senators would see the downside of the bill, and they did not. He would hopefully at least retain the ability to veto the bill. It was time for all of these forms. 65, huh? This 
Let's see. Let's do that. So 65. I'm not sure there's much else we can do. Bulls are updated. Let's do some copier too. These god darn Republicans and the Democrats are like still there too. Question unity. So I could say a little bit of messing further in the Northeast High Speed Rail Project. President Morris said, I look back out of the crowd of reports, and I'll have the next question. Mr. President, a reporter for whose name escaped chat, do you have any response to Congressman Lax Laxalt's new efficiency in government and act? Uh, his criticism of the administration's UI has certainly been harsh. Jeff flashed a smile, very glad you asked. He said, look, I respect Congressman Lax, or Laxic. He is a good man who loves the country, and I'm sure that we both want a better America. Even if we disagree about the best way to achieve, but I have to question what he and the budget hawks have them like to hope to achieve. The URI is a program that has approved the lives of millions of Americans, and we're going to defend it. To be honest, I wish I knew who passed this issue. There's no secret that we live in dangerous times. There's war in the Middle East, tensions uh, in Eastern Europe, a continued instability in Africa, and times like these, America needs to be united, marching towards together. I invite Congressman Laxalt and his compatriots to turn away from the divisive politics and stand together for a more peaceful world. Dr. Kissinger, for instance, has just visited the new government in Russia to congratulate them on reunification. I'm excited to talk about more, more what we've achieved with a new partner in the coming days. Uh, that's a common scope question. Chef felt himself relaxed. He had actually done a good job on that one, hadn't he? He could see the reporters nodding as he answered all the question after question. He came to a certain conclusion. It might just actually work. Uh, 50. Ooh. We get threatened strikes. But would we have enough? We probably don't get this one. The next one would probably do okay on though. We only get three political power days. That's not enough. <laughs> Mixed celebration. Ah, dog. Birch Bay put his hand over the receiver and spoke to the others gathered in the Oval Office. The workers, uh, welfare act failed to even pass. Really? Really? <clears throat> Conservatives are in the disarray and pointing fingers at one another for failing to bring it across the finish line. I doubt we'll be seeing it again. It's wonderful, Jacob said, clapping her hands happily. She had expected the worst from the Senate, but seeing that the URI's enemies had dropped the ball very badly indeed. The URI's welfare provisions would survive in another day. Amid, alone amid the celebration, Jeff Morrison worried. He knew many Americans were perfectly open to restrictions up upon access to welfare. But if our work assistants did not like the idea of public funds going to anyone who could fill out a form, he was one of them. With the mood of the country, it did not seem like the, the best move to be celebrating this victory when it could be so easily backfiring. Backfire. Jacobs raised a quizzical eyebrow at him, prompting him for an explanation for his silence. I just worry the conservatives will hang any welfare fraud around our necks, he explained. This bill has problems, but it's trying to deal with serious issues. He showed off. <clears throat> I see your point, Mr. Morrison, Bay said. But these provisions of the URI are popular, and if we want them to work properly, then we can't have all these conditions and restrictions placed on them. Jacobs nodded, adding, <clears throat> Unless Trump passed, Mr. President, and the conservatives' energy phase, this program will stand as a keystone of the URI. Its survival is an absolute positive. Another piece of hearts and legacy survives. Yeah, that's good. Good. <clears throat> it seems like we're doing well now ish. Oh, we probably need campaign still. Oh, plus five now. Oh, god dang. Are you freaking kidding me? Provide organization. Well, we don't need any more boots. We're 100% for everything now. I'm glad we built the interstate. Transportation assessment app. Out of the narrow walls of the White House study, Chef rifled through the newest bill. He'd been briefed on it a few times earlier, but Chef thought he'd take a moment to look through it himself. The proposed Bo's bill was weak, even by the standards of the anti URI movement. Devoid of any of these clever workarounds of previous bills, the Transportation Assessment Act was a naked set of cuts to the precautions and regulations of the hard to establish during the oil crisis. With their energy crisis over, supposedly, there was no need for these frivolous protections. Chip knew it wasn't an attack on Harvard, Jacobs, or even himself. The URI was a target. These men had a host of incentives, ideological, economic, and careerist. Uh, messy. Entanglement of beliefs and motives, with which Chip had long given up analyzing, yet he couldn't help but see it as low. No matter what screamed on the TV, um, these men had to understand the reason that energy precautions were vital. They, they had seen the oil crisis play out all across the globe, even after watching others fail and fall. They were happy to hold, hack at the ropes beneath their feet. Chip sighed. It was just one man. Uh, he had done what he could to prove the worth uh, of his and Hart's work, which will come, which will, what comes will come. Nothing to do but to wait. So we had the, basically the same score last time, but it just sort of didn't pass. It's weird. Very odd. But oh well. We will do with it no matter what. Send him east. Yeah, send him east again.
that though, 25 billion is not bad, but I wish we had more focuses to do. I mean, we have a lot of bills and all, but like, bro, where are the bills at? Or where, where are the focuses at? God dang, there's Republicans. It fails. Somehow. Um, Jeff had waited hours for this phone call. When it came, it came with some news he'd been praying for. Bill had failed, Bay, Bay told him. Uh, failed, failed. It couldn't even get 50 senators. The Republican in the Senate understood that the URI's crucial energy protections were something America needed. We've got to consider momentum now, Bay told Jeff in the midst of the shared euphoria. This one's got the opposition eating crow. America's telling us to faith in us again, faith in heart, think of the things we could be doing with this kind of headway. Jeff did consider it, but not for long. I appreciate the attitude, but I could got to be honest. I just can't keep staying up like this. I spent man, Bay, at least for now. I'm a spent man. You're going to need to give me some extra time. And two said the goodbyes, and Chip got it from his seat. The last slide of dusk was seen from his office. Uh, Chip could finally go home. Even the president needs his rest. The attempts to repeal the URI over, and we've emerged, or negged, or re-energized. We've re-energized -en with a governable Congress. You folks are really into planning our agenda. Oh my god, how much more is this? Ah, this one. TV is done. The conservatives have cooked up all the chances of meaningfully repealing the URI. They got all committee hearings after committee hearings and forced symbolic votes all day, but all of them know that nothing is getting past Jeff Morrison's veto plan, or veto pen. All they can do is stand at their feet and cry, the poor dudes. Imagine being some Washington big shot and getting outgunned by some heck henpecked Louisiana dandy. With the threats ending, the end of our term approaching, we're thinking over our time to do something for ourselves. The noble office address. We're going to do our first televised uh, <clears throat> address since we become the president of the United States to show the nation what we are and what we're capable of. Most folks won't think that we have a legacy, but what do they know? God, saving God, saving gods, saving hearts, you or I, God bless them, is enough for us to sleep at night. Jeff can move to the, res can move to the desk of the president to begin bringing things to an end. TV. Finally. Our final endeavor. We have, have previously been governing at the heart of administration, but now the chapter must draw to close and become our own government. Polling. This has been a tough part of the campaign, man, I'll be honest. It's not been easy. Um, yeah, not much down there. No, oh, the dynasty. Requiem aeternum done et domine et lux perpetua lucia ae. Amen. Questia in pace. Let's do this one first and then we'll do our final endeavor. Congress votes on the bill. It would have been defeated, but no, whatever. Well, especially with elections coming up. Good RDC campaign. All right. Well, we'll see. Finally, something good came out of this. We should have an event. Some sort of legacy. Jeff Morrison promised himself he would not cry on the ground breaking up the Philip Park Presidential Library. He had asked Zalza to play interference if she noticed his face quivering. Heck, uh, he'd even asked Bay to intervene. And we got a motion during his address. Uh, to their infinite credit, both had agreed, and so the president found himself standing behind a stage that just jutted against the banks of the Detroit River, trying to keep his emotions in check as the mayor delivered his remarks. <clears throat> Hello, Chip, said a voice. Chip looked up from his note cards to see Jane Jacobs dressed in a smooth black dress. How's the last minute speech charting going? Chip smiled. It was the first time either of them had seen each other in person since the end of the URI repeal effort. Jane had to keep her department while Chip had to keep the White House. It was easier that way, less friction. Oh, the usual. Today is a happy moment in dedication, dedicating this library. Uh, we honor Phil, but also honor the best in our country. That kind of thing. Sounds like you got a handle. I'll look forward to the address. They looked at each other with Chip. Chip doubted they would ever be friends. He and Jane Jacobs had formed a kind of accord. Long gone were the days of snipping in the cabinet meetings. They respected one another and the work they'd done for Phil. For America, they fought side by side and emerged stronger for it. Their class from beyond the stage. Any moment now, Chip would be called to deliver his remarks. He gave a polite thanks and before he revealed himself to the simple crowd. He turned back to Jane. Now that we're preserved, Hearts Legacy, do you think we could build one of our own? Secretary Smiley, yes, Chip. I really think we could. The Heart and Soul, TT3, Unfinished Business, America Team, thank you for playing good, through the good old Heart and Chip. Thank you and have a good day. So now... Dusk approaches New Orleans. So that's the end of this. That's what I thought this campaign, this campaign, this episode would be. Because it's been long. It's been a long campaign. And I've enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. There are a couple bugs, not going to lie. Um, a couple bugs still in the game. Which really, really sucks. But, you know, you get, it, it, it's going to get fixed probably eventually. And I, I'm not going to complain about it. It took a while for this to come out. Softboy Anarchist. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm not going to complain. I mean, the devs are doing... A, a pretty good job with what they're doing trying to achieve what they're trying to get so 
And even though we all don't agree politically with what they're doing sometimes, you know, I still respect what the work they've been putting in. But our fellow endeavor, let's do that one first, and then we'll probably end the campaign. Wow. That's weird for me to say. Polling. Democratic leader Hubert Humphrey found himself half walking, half running through the halls of the White House, pushing through the scores of aides on his way to President Chet Morrison's office. Or side office, really. Have you, Chet, looked up the polls? Well, sure, Zach, but Hubert, I mean, Christ, I was just telling Bay, I was just, the president is quite excited. Uh, as you can see, said Birch Bay, as with a achievable smile, I think we've all had hope. I'll hope to staunch the bleeding vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the URI, but it seems like a 10-point increase in the support among union voters, 15% increase among likely urban voters, roared Chap with uncorrected gusto, 30% increase among rural voters. He slapped his hand against the pages of the report, a smile brimming from ear to ear. Do you know what this means? Neither Hubert or Bay said anything. The president was clearly having a moment. We've got to raise it to the conservatives' throats. The dudes thought they had us with these numbers, but with these numbers, they do nothing. The Congress won't have a prayer in the world to destroy the URI. The stupid, rotten dudes. Humphrey cleared his up, but he could not repress a smile. Not this language I'd use, but yes, let's talk, let's talk next steps. A conservative revolution defeated. But let's get through the, let's have at least uh, the election, and then maybe we'll end it there. Yeah, it's disappointing that we can't get this stuff all done. Ha, a good portion of these are done, but, you know, not enough. And that's still at 0%, so there are definitely bugs, but like, you know, overall. Like I said, I do respect what the devs have done for this. Oh, arcade mode, yeah, it's pretty normal. It's a good trial. Oh, God. But uh, West Russian Revolution in front one again. Um, but yeah, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed this campaign. It was a lot, and I'll be honest. The past like five episodes, I've had my computer on for like literally a week trying to record stuff, and uh, I ran out of hard drive space on my computer, so that's why I temporarily saves and I couldn't like reload saves anymore, which really sucks at the time screen. But that's on my side. That's my issue. Not your guys' issue, but you know it is what it is. And we only got the debt down to twenty-two and a half billion, which sucks. We were so close, so close. Kind of didn't grow that much, but, you know, whatever. Send elections. We ended with 50, 50 frickin' Democratic senators, 9 Republicans, and 19 progressive nationalists, and 22, or 19 progressives, and 22 nationalists. So we gained 6 seats. Okay, 50 from us, not bad, but how? I hope you enjoyed this campaign. It's been one heck of a campaign. We'll come play some more America soon and see what happens with them. But if you enjoyed it, leave, do please consider leaving a like. It helps me out a whole bunch. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for, for watching. And have a great, great, great rest of your day.